Okay, so in this tutorial, we've got the arms, the start of the antennas, the head, all following following along with the upper body. So what we're actually going to do in here is get it so we can get the upper body to follow the lower body, so this chest area. But we don't want to just simply parent that, because there might be occasions where, you know, this character might be grabbing hold of something above, and he might be stretching. So you might want the lower body to be dangling behind and moving about, but if this was parented and we were moving this control about we'd have to counter animate this control up here to keep its position. So to avoid that what we want to do is have basically an a custom attribute in here which says follow chest and then if we set it to 1 it's going to follow the chest and then if you set it to 0 it's just going to follow the world so it's going to move on its own. So to do that what we're going to do is, and we can notice in here we've got the rotate offset group as well. So I'm just going to bring up the windows, render editors, and hypershade. And I'm doing this through the nodes instead of adding uh, parent constraints or point constraints. And the reason I'm doing that is because if I do it through the nodes, I will always have um, this control and these groups free. They won't have any constraints in there. And that means if I'm animating later on, I can always add the constraints in there alongside the follow controls that we're going to add in here. So it just means we can add constraints later on if we needed to, you know, like halfway through the animation or something. Or if there's a shot in the animation that needed needed a quick constraint just for a bit, we could just add that in there. We don't have to. We won't be conflicting with any other constraints that are already there. So I'm just going to press up, select the curve, press up, and press F in the outliner just to find that group and what I'm going to do is hit control G again to group it because it's the rotate offset group we do have a few different um, values in here and actually what I want to do for this is just have a group that has zeros in all the translates and rotates so we're starting from a clean and I just want to snap it to the pivot of the same position, so I'm going to select the control, show the local rotative axis. If we can't see that, it might be because handles and different things are hidden, so I'm just going to go show all. And I'm going to select that group again, press insert, vert, vert snap back up there, and then I'll hide the local rotative axis again. I'm just going to copy the name group CC upper body and instead of rotate offset I'm just going to put follow. So this is going to be a follow group. So it's a group that's used to allow this whatever's underneath it to follow several different objects. So with that group still selected I'm going to go graph add selected to graph. And I'll just move this to the side for the moment. And the next thing I'm going to do is create a curve. I'm going to make sure it's linear and this is called a what I like to call a tie control so any controls it's best to make them look like you know what they are so here I'm just going to click on each corner making a diagonal in the middle to make sort of this bow tie shape and um, center the pivot on that find out where we've put it, so we made it up here and we can vert snap this To the same pivot point as what it's going to follow. So I want, so I want it to follow this um, chest control. So I'm going to snap it to the same pivot, and then I'm going to delete the history and freeze transformations. Now, so it looks like a tie, and I'm going to call it a tie control instead of control curve. So tie and score, and I could check this is the chest, and this is the upper body. tie underscore chest follow or one so the tie control is basically it looks like a tie it's named tie and it means it's going to tie the rig together and we can hide these later on but for the moment I'm just going to keep it visible 
and all we need to do is we froze the transformations Oops. so I'm just going to deselect the joints in the selection mask so we can select it a bit easier and we froze the transformation so now what we can do is we can select the control shift select the tie and go to constraint parent got the options make sure it's constraining all and this basically means wherever this control moves so if I move it about minus 8.6 in X you can see that value is getting transferred across but this also means that if for whatever reason it's like if I go to the group up above, above this so the rotate offset group and I move it you can see how the control itself we haven't moved it so this is in case if we move the global control we move moving the global control this is parented to it somehow so it won't get any translates in there but because we parent constrained this is going to still get translate values so it's getting the world space values of this control which is what we want so I'll just undo before I move that group so this means even if this control moves or something else moves this control it's going to still cause this to move above which is what we want so I'm going to go graph, add selected to graph so let's bring up the hypershade with a tie selected graph, add selected to graph I'm just going to range it from like top left to bottom right so I know it's flowing down okay so we've got those two controls in there so now what we need to do is I'm going to create I'm going to type in blend for blend color and AV for average node and what we're going to do is I'm going to duplicate this twice and selecting both I'm going to set all the color uh, color 1 and color 2 to 0 and much like what we did with earlier on with this RKFK switch we're going to switch in between a value of uh, color 1 which is going to be the tie controls translates and rotates and a color 0 which is I mean a color 2 which is 0 which means follow nothing follow the world and then we're going to plug that into an average node so what we'll do here is I'm going to right click on the tie control go to translate translate left click on the first blend color and put it to input color 1 do the same but with the rotate and do it in the other um, blend color and put it to color 1 and you won't see a line but we can just check that it's changed color in the channel box so we know it's made the connection and I'm going to take the outputs of these output and put it into the input 3D 0 and we're going to duplicate this again and take the output into the and I've got left click input 3D 0 so what's happening here is um, now well actually I'll just show you if we take the output 3D of this and I'll input into the translate to the output of this output 3D into the rotate now if I set the blender to 0 that means we're choosing the second value which is color 2 which is set to 0 0 0 you can see how moving this lower control it's set to purple up here so we can tell there's some sort of a connection but we can see it's not moving and the arms are moving a little bit because we need to clean up the skinning on that um, ribbon spine so we don't need to worry about that but you can see moving this about isn't going to do anything but now if we select these two blenders and switch them to 1 it means it's now using color 1 and color 1 is that tie control so wherever we move this it's going to move the tie control which is going to in turn move the upper body so you can see how that's working now the power of this is because we're blending we're smooth blending I can move this control, select like these two blenders and we can see that we can blend from following the object or not following the object and later on we can use some mel like we did with the arms if we want the animator to just click a button to follow or not follow on the the rig doesn't move it keeps the same pose all we do there is we'd have some mel saying 
query the pivot of this control, switch to not following it, and then snap it back to the same position, like we did with the arms earlier on. But again, the reason I like setting this up in here is in case someone doesn't like using Mel or they haven't got access to the Mel, they have always got that hard set in stone control in the rig to switch between the two things. They don't need to use the Mel if they don't want to. So they can always switch no matter what. Okay, so you might be wondering why we didn't just get these blank colours and put them straight into the group. And I'm just going to reset the transforms on these. And the reason for that is because now we have these um, plus minus average nodes. If I double click on these and we change it to sum, so make sure it's sum, it means it's going to add whatever comes in here. So if, for instance, I duplicate these blank colours over here and I created another tie control which was another object, so you could have another character in the scene, so like, so like another character comes over him and grabs his chest and shakes him about with both his hands. What you could then do is do the same, uh, put a tie control on the other character's hand, freeze transformations, constrain it, parent constrain it to the, their hand, add it to the graph, input its translates and rotates into these two blend colours, and then input these into the average. And this means we could actually then blend either from the world, which would be this zero in all these blenders, or we could switch between the chest, so it follows his own his own chest, or we could switch between another character's arm. So the animator only has to move that character's arm and this character's chest is going to follow along. But the thump, for the moment, I'm just going to delete that because all we really need for the chest controls, for the upper body really, is just this lower control down here. So what, before we've finished with this, what I'm going to do is select the chest control and just go to Edit, Add Attribute, and I can put Follow and give it a lowercase f because it's that. So I'll follow chest. Minimum of 0, maximum of 1, default of 0. Add. And another good thing about this is um, because we've got follow chest, maximum of 0 and 1, and each other control that we want it to follow, we could add an extra attribute. So what we could actually do is have it follow several things so it's going to average the distance or add the distance between them so that way we can get to follow several objects and add all those objects together okay so what I'm going to do is go to graph, I'd select it to graph so we can just get that in there and I'm going to middle mouse drag and drop this onto the blend colors go to other, I'm going to take that follow chest and put it into the blender I'm going to select the next blend color, reload right Blender. That means now on the fly I can get to follow the chest, rotate the chest, we're having a slight problem here we'll after. So one thing we might need to do here is if we select press up a few times go to that rotate that follow group and just move the pivot instead of moving the pivot from having the pivot in the chest the upper body controls we need it in the chest controls so that way as we rotate this we're rotating from the same pivot so really all we're actually doing is when we're rotating this we're rotating a group which contains all the upper body controls that's rotating from the same pivot and that way we still have all these groups free so these two groups free to add any constraints or change if we need to and then later on we could add a constraint just to this control if we wanted a character to grab him or anything like that okay so I'm going to do the same with these um, in the next tutorial the same with these antenna controls now